Surely happiness can be found. Surely there's someone for me. Oh, who cares? Yes, who cares for me? Let's Hunt is a video series with tactics, weapons, locations, and other useful tips, always around one particular animal. Good to see you, Hunter. We are going to hunt bighorn sheep. For me personally, the most difficult animal to hunt, and I'm going to tell you in a minute why that is. This is a quick look at the map. I'm starting here in this tent up in the Timbergold Trails Mountains. Pretty much in the middle there between this range where you can find bighorn sheep and white-tailed ptarmigans. I will show you two ways for hunting bighorn sheep. The first one is the more conventional way. So basically tracking and glassing and looking for them. And the second option will be a little surprise. So stay tuned. It's going to be a little bit different. Okay, let's get started. I'm just gonna walk around and look for tracks. Like said, this is the more conventional way. And until we find some tracks and see some signs of bighorn sheep, I will tell you why they are the most difficult animals to hunt in this game. The first reason is they have a very high roaming speed. They are really, really fast. They walk around as herds. In very most cases, mixed herds of males and females. And they are walking really fast all the time. Not sure what they're up to, what business they have to accomplish. Quite different to what I would expect. Usually such an animal would just stand around, lay around, eat a lot. But these sheep are on the move all the time. The second difficulty is the terrain. There's a lot of rocks here. And many times... Uh, following them is difficult. You will follow a track and then you have to look for the next track a long time. So in addition to them being really fast, you think you're going to catch up with them walking and then you lose a lot of time looking for that next track. That is really difficult here. The next reason is there is no audio clues. The only audio clue is the really rare uh, fighting that happens around noontime but quite honestly, I've not heard this really uh, very often. So you can practically say there is no audio clues. You cannot hear any steps like the Ibex, ha the Ibex has falling rocks. Um, you don't have that here. So the only time you will hear something from them is um, what the hunter mate can pick up is the fighting. I've seen that sometime around noontime. But for the better lighting conditions, I'm starting here at 9 o'clock in the morning. Another thing that makes them difficult to hunt is if they are in steep mountain sites, like up here. They're not in such sites very often. But if you start shooting at them, they hop up and down. It's not a constant run. It's not a straight line. They hop up and down uh, quite strangely. So hitting them again follow-up shots is really difficult. Another thing that is that they blend in nicely to the environment. Uh, they have a white backside, so that sticks out sometime a little bit. You can detect that, but mostly their brownish color fits nicely into the landscape. And that's just another factor, while sometimes you realize you're looking at them for the longest time, or you have been looking at them, you didn't see them until something moved and then you can spot them. So they are really, really difficult to hunt. Oh, and one more thing, there is no lure. So even if you detect them, even if you hear the rare fighting, you cannot lure them. There is no collar, there is no baiting, there is no scent spray, nothing. So all these factors together make them really, really tough to hunt. A lot of people say there is not enough sheep, there is not enough ptarmigans up here. This area is pretty empty. I believe there's a lot of sheep. Um, there's just as many sheep there as you would, for example, find coyotes on the northern island of Whiteheart Island. 
but because there's so many other species, you don't really notice. But once you really focus just on coyotes, that's just an example. There's many of those. If you focus on just one animal in one area, you will all of a sudden think, where are they? I can't find them. Because you would see them all the time, uh, the other times where you don't really focus on one species. So there's bighorn sheep around here, plenty of them. Uh, but it's a big area. And because there's only the ptarmigan around as the other animal, you feel there is not really many of them around. I should really be running um, because of the vast area, because of, uh, you know, they're still hard to find because of all these things that I had mentioned. Uh, and also because they're not really good in their hearing. Their hearing is really, really bad. Probably among the worst. Oh, this one. I'm going to pick up and look at this track. This is a female 8 to 15 minutes ago. And this would be close for most other animals. Most animals will have spooked. Uh, any deer will have spooked. Uh, rabbits, whatever you name them. They will, all, will have all spooked. This one I'm not sure. Even though it's pretty close. I have been running. I have been sprinting just for a short while. And... Uh, but I'm coming back to what I said. Their hearing is really bad. Sometimes you will be surprised you run. And then all of a sudden you hear footsteps. And you stop and you look. And there are actually uh, sheep right around you. So their hearing is really bad. Among the worst in this game, I would say, alongside the Ibex. They all do, uh, they're also not very good at hearing. So that's a little bit of an advantage. That makes it just a little bit easier. Now I'm picking up a track here from a black uh, from a bighorn sheep with the weight estimation of 95 to 120. My tracking skill is maxed. I'm at 20, uh, even though I haven't really tracked them too much. Uh, you know the tracking level has gone to 20. And if you get this weight estimation, this is the most narrow that you can get. This is the best estimation that you can get. 95 to 120, that's the largest rams. So I will try and actually find this ram by tracking. This is now a bigger herd as it seems. I don't want to pick up any other tracks until I know where my ram is at. So this is the first example for how to find the next tracks here. Uh, here it is. Wasn't too hard actually. Uh, oh, going over here now. So this one says uh, 28 to 35 minutes away. That's quite a ways for the fast roaming bighorn sheep. And now you can witness me trying to find the next tracks here. I said before this, the sheep, the sheep zigzag. Um, well, I said before that it's hard because of the terrain, and the result of the terrain is that the sheep zigzag. Uh, the, the tracks point left and right, and it's really hard. So you see here already where is the next track from this particular one. I could follow the herd, and I'm actually going to see if there's a number of them around. Oh, this is even older. So I've now picked up tracks from animals from 40 minutes away, from 25 minutes away, and from 5 minutes away. And I'm still looking for that next track of this ram. Here it is, nicely hidden be behind the rock. So that's the challenge that you have. So if you like bighorn sheep hunting, I can only recommend, like I do that with every animal, click, 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 pick up all the tracks, keep going with the tracking, pick up three tracks of every animal if you can. That's going to give you the most bonus uh, just to level up on that tracking. The, the, the higher your level, your tracking skill, the further away you can see the tracks and the, the, the uh, more accurate is that cone that you see there or the sector I should say here is the next track not within the sector or just on the line 
That is Bighorn Sheep tracking. I can tell you, it's a pain. It's really not easy. And I've I've tracked ten thousands of animals in this game, and yet with this particular animal, I'm having a hard time. So this is the first option here. I mentioned initially there's two ways. There's two things. Uh, in the second way, I'm going to give you a little information that might come as a surprise to you and it really makes things a lot easier uh, but that's for the second option so here you go <laughs> where is that second track usually you run in the middle of the sector Then you go a bit to the edges. You may also look at the previous axis. That has also a way, there's all the possible indication where the next X on the hunter mate might be. So there's no, oh, there's another track here. So this could be the group where it continues. I have to guess now because I cannot pick up these tracks. Is my ram among these? Oh. So this is just to show you. I find this really hard. Where the heck is that next footstep or dropping? Oh, this is hard work. What you can do is, so let's see what the time says here. This one says 26 minutes, this one says 25 minutes, so I can know this is the same group, and now, now I'm, I'm following this one. And I will read all tracks from this group until I'm back with the ram. So this one went over here, so they did go over here. Let's look at the time, 21, yes, that's where the group headed for. This is another way, if you lose a track, use a companion. Um, and then track these guys and now if I click every track here from this group eventually I should get back to my ram see here is a track did you see the track <laughs> you can oh there it is oh dear it's really hard here all these rocks laying around is one of these my ram no, this one. Oh. Did he go off on his own? You know, I really don't mind having these issues here because this is what happens. This is how I perceive pickhorn sheep tracking. See, my, my ram's not, com it's not coming back. I'm not finding it anymore. And now I can hear big horn sheep. And they're not running. They're right up here. Can you hear the footsteps? Now you hear them nicely. I've been running. I've been running here. They are less than 50 meters away. They sound closer than what they are, actually. Uh, you feel they're just behind this tree, uh, but then they can be 20, 30 meters out. But this is nicely to show I have been running and now I hear them walking or trotting before they heard me running.
So their hearing is really, really bad. And I also brought this guy. The custom 44 revolver. Which is really nice for fast follow-up shots. Are they now running? Have they heard me? So I'm, I have given up on my ram here, unless I stumble upon it. See, I'm actually walking towards them. Where are they? I hear a lot of them. They're all around me. If they get into uh, steeper mountain sides, they can get stuck or really confused l running left and right when they spook. It sounds like they're right here and yet I'm not there yet. Hopefully we can now see one. Yes, this is a female. And now, of course, when I shoot, everybody's going to run. <laughs> so I'm going to quickly pick this up. I'm not going to waste time with the um, trophy shot. Because I believe I can get more. I believe I can shoot more because of this steep situation here. They can, can't really run fast, they can't really get confused. So I'm running after them here, hoping I can get one more. Of course, if I shoot it off the mountainside, I will have to go down to pick it up. Up here I can hear one. Here I am back at the tent. I ended up giving up on these uh, other sheep. Um, I've shot one and I had more running around. That was really the purpose. Uh, but I wanted to do another one, this time going uh, to this side, to the left side, if you will. Um, actually going northeast. So I tracked down the sheep, I shot one, and then at the steep mountainside, I messed up. Um, so, but I, I said I want to show you this again with the whole tracking. There is another area up here uh, from my tent. When I go to this side, there's also sheep around all the time. Again, I'm going to run. I'm going to load the same weapons. And as we come over this hill here, down there's a little forest down there where you can find ptarmigan sometimes uh, but many times there is sheep I found this to be a reliable place to found sheep right away so since I had an abrupt ending of my first short session there I, th I said I'm gonna do another one just to show again how the tracking version works and also to show you this place here as you come down here it's worth glassing 
that's all the part of the conventional hunting tracking glassing and usually listening for any clues which there aren't and there you go this is really a, a start of the of a next hunt immediately after the other i haven't started here a hundred times until i finally have uh, big horns they are really here in the very next hunt um, and it proves the point this is a good place um, just glad i bought the i brought the red dot and take your time he's now gonna stand there uh, there is no point in rushing your shot unless you shoot at multiples running away or something but if you have a single one like this take your time because if you miss it's gonna be hard So the nice ram is down. My guess is it's going to score 145 fish. And the reason I say that is 80% of the rams score between 140 and 148 for some reason. Hopefully EW is watching along and will give us a bunch of better rams. No, that's not usually gonna happen. I hear flapping, flapping wings. I did mention you get you can get ptarmigans down there. And we can hear some flapping wings. That's the ptarmigans. So if you have the dose, why don't you check out that place? So I wanted to show you this place. This time I didn't track much. I just ran again until I actually heard this guy running. Uh, this can happen to good scoring rams. Good scoring animals are always more aware of your appearance, if you will. They sense you better and that's what happened here. The nice looking ram ran off. So that's also the way you run, you stop, you listen. And you will see when I show you here in a minute how the other option works. The little surprise that listening is the key when hunting bighorn sheep. So let's look at this one here with the curled um, horns. My guess is 145 fish or pretty straight 145. Let's see. <laughs> Can it be more exact 145 than this? Thank you very much for spawning this particular ram. Uh, I do often guessing. I really often try to guess the animals that I shoot. <laughs> I've never been so exact and never been so right than uh, here. 145.3 zeros. This is what they look like. Um, I also show them in my total guide to Timbergold Trails. Sorry about the uh, flipping camera here. Um, really trying to just be close here. The eyes are really beautiful. The fur, um, it's not really fur, but it's, I want to say the colors. This looks really, really nice. Uh, let me get closer here. The curled horns, really nice. This is the big horn sheep ram and i've hunted them uh, no i don't want the trophy in my lodge i've hunted the big horn the conventional way so that is walking around looking for tracks trying to hear them trot around glass around this is option number one and now i'm going to show you another option Oh, I see you're still here. Thanks for sticking around. Um, you will find that this is worth it because I'm now going to show you a little secret around bighorn sheep. Um, and the big secret is that the bighorn sheep make a noise that you can locate from far away and that makes it really easy to locate them. It's a noise that the hunter mate cannot pick up, um, but you can clearly hear this. The way I want to describe this noise is imagine you have a tilted rocky plate and you pour sand on that 
and the sand is running down that plate. Um, so I'm going to call this sliding sand. Um, that noise, or maybe like rain drizzling, or something sizzling, uh, a bit, bit of paper. That's what this sounds like. And I want to show you first uh, in two video sections uh, what this means uh, when the sheep are around that very distinctive sound. I think you can clearly tell this distinctive sound, uh, this sliding sand noise that the sheep make. It makes them really easy to locate because you can hear that sound from as far as you can see them. So the trick here is to uh, go along areas where this noise occurs. It doesn't occur in all terrains, in flatter terrains, in forests, it doesn't occur. It's mostly in steeper areas and on very steep mountain sides. This time I'm starting from this tent down here and I'm going to make use of these tunnels. There is a tunnel going through this and another one through this. I will fast travel to this area. I will listen for the sound and then only hunt them by listening for that sound. I might fast travel to this through this tunnel end up in this area doing the very same again. So the plan is to not track them, to not uh, glass around and search for them, but just to listen. That's what we're going to do here. I bring the 300 carbon for longer shots, the 44 revolver for closer shots. And all I will do is when I arrive, I will just listen for this very distinctive sliding sand noise. There can be ptarmigans here as well, sheep very often. If there is none, we will just move on. The next tunnel is right over here. Uh, but this is really the type of area you see the very steep walls here, where you can see, where you can hear this very uh, particular noise and where you can easily locate the sheep if they are around. If you run around the heavy breathing, will make it harder to hear that sound. Also, um, heavy wind can make it more difficult. So let's see if we can hear this. Just wait for the birds, for the wind and the heavy breathing to go past. Can you hear it? All you can hear right now is this sliding sand noise. And I can know for sure we have bighorn sheep over here. They don't make the noise all the time. But if you hear the noise, it's sheep. It's nothing else. No other source will make this. So I will go and try and see them. Over here somewhere. We can hear the noise. Let's just go closer. 
We'll just walk. It doesn't matter if they run. Just gonna make the noise easier to hear. So in this type of terrain, you will not hear it. They walk down there. But if they're uh, on these mountain sides, you can hear it. It's coming from over here. Maybe behind the trees. So listening is the key, and actually, if you if you listened well, when I did the first option, the tracking near the steep side there, you would hear that sound as well. You might go back in the video afterwards and listen. I didn't want to mention it, but you can clearly hear that sound as well. And also in the sec the second time when the 145 ran away, you would hear that very nicely. Just behind the trees here. Very clearly audible. So imagine you come here, you have no idea, you want to look for bighorn sheep, you look for tracks, you get distracted by, uh, by the birds. If you don't know about this particular noise, you can spend a lot of time looking for sheep. Uh, but you, you no longer want to look for them, you want to listen for them a lot more. And now we can hear them trot. Yeah, we get a mixture now, you can hear the trotting, you can hear the sliding sand noise even down here. Point is proven already in our first attempt here. The sliding sand gives away the position of the bighorn sheep. Just keep listening to these very particular noises, the trotting and, well, forgive me, I just keep calling it the sliding sand. Maybe you have a better expression for it. Sizzling, drizzling, whatever. Put it underneath the video. Tell me what it is. But I think in my brain, the sliding sand is stuck. Where are you guys? Now listen. Can hear it even better. Very good example for how this works. Let's just run at them. Steep mountains can be troublesome for their pathfinding. Can you hear this noise? So even after they run, they're easy to locate. I don't even bother with the tracks. You've seen me struggle earlier so all I do is I will just use my ears
Down here we can still hear the sliding sand noise a little bit. But then as they go down into these large woods and fir woods, it's going to be over with the sizzling, uh, sliding sand. This is what I meant when I said one of the difficulties is to see them. They blend in nicely. Let's just go by the hearing. Another one is climbing over here. Let's just get one more and then we'll use this tunnel as well. See if we're just as lucky. I have to decide for which I go after. They're all gone silent. Ah, uh, there is one of them. Oops, just got over the ridge. So this one, come on. There was another as well. And now the sand cannot be heard. The special noise running down there doesn't make that noise. But you get the point. So whenever you hear this noise, keep glassing. Sometimes the sheep are not easy to be, uh, to be seen in the mountains or in the woods. Just go, keep going for that very particular noise. Sooner or later the sheep will be there. Let's just listen one more time before we fast travel. And this is of course not a hunting route for longer sessions. You know, you can just go through that valley here and then go through another valley after this tunnel. But that's very short. But it's really just to prove the point. I know sheep are here uh, and I know there are steep walls. So the sliding sand noise effect can be nicely demonstrated. Now all I have is wind. So I'm going to go through this. Let's see how this goes. Sometimes over here I do glass. <laughs> Just because it's an open area, but otherwise Just listen. What we he have here ahead is a very long wall. Uh, 
very wide. And if you go there and just listen, you can uh, find sheep as well. And of course, they're very easy to shoot. Well, the hard part is if they're further away, shooting up, you cannot lay flat. So it's not always easy, but, but at least uh, they're easy to find. I can hear the noise, but I'm not sure where it's coming from. And we have some ptarmigans flapping their wings flying through the area. Oh, there's a sheep. Well, if it's there, I might as well just... Oops. Weapon immobile. That's a lucky one. We didn't hear it. Well, I heard something, but I wasn't sure what it was. Could have been this, could have been another. There's many sheep around. And if you imagine that you can hear this particular noise in a radius of 220 meters, any sheep in that range will give you that noise. Armigans can still be heard. Let's listen. Now we can hear the Tarmigans chat. So this is a lucky find. That has nothing to do with the uh, sound that we're after. But again, up here I will just listen. We already know how, how much this is going to score. Between 140 and 148. One forty four exactly in the middle. All right, so here we're only going to be disturbed by the flapping. I'm going to run over there and then walk along the railway. Um, and the target is the steep mountainside. And really only to once again demonstrate how you can locate sheep only by this sound. So let's see if we're lucky. If I'm not, I'll do another tour quickly. Uh, because we're, we're covering three sections here. Uh, in the first section, we already, we've already found the sheep. In the second section, which is this, we didn't hear them. Well, I did say I hear something, but... Could have been any sheep in the area. The one we've shot was actually more in this forest type of area in the flatter parts, which doesn't really make that noise. Doesn't matter. The sheep was there. It just shows also that uh, they're also here around here. And now we're coming. We're coming to this particular area that I mentioned. Wind can be loud. But every now and then it uh, it goes down, the noise goes down, and 
we can again hear other stuff that we're after. What I wanted to mention before also is these uh, sliding sound noises sometimes can drive you crazy, especially if you're after a hurt that's spooked. They go left and right and they're all over the place. Uh, you can go crazy because you can't really tell where the sound is coming from uh, with headphones. You will likely be able to tell. Just keep moving towards what you think you can uh, you can load it, locate it from. And as you get closer, it becomes more clear. No sound right now. The running is actually beneficial. If there is sheep, they will start running uh, and they will start making this noise. If they just stand there, you might not hear them. There's another long bridge ahead here. Walking on the bridge can be good for, uh, for having a free sight, but then you're, you're limited in your movements. Let's stop once again and just listen. And the two video sections that you've seen where I demonstrated just the sound effect were actually from these mountain sites. So the sheep are there as well. Here we are again. I didn't end up seeing anything or to be more precise, hearing anything apart from a lot of wind. I'm going to do another tour. Very same scenario. Just fast travel to through this tunnel directly into where the action is. Up here we hear the sand. Actually quite a bit of it. I just hope they refill all the sand in every session. Oh, listen to this. We already know a lot of sheep are around. I can now pick a number of directions. Up there we can clearly hear it. There, look at this. Two sheep right there. Never tracked them, never got a call, just by listening to the sound. That's what I meant, uh, hopping around on these mountainsides. One of the challenges, still there. And li listen behind me. You know what that is? A lot of running sheep. I can't tell you enough how important this is. Of course, you can track down sheep. You can glass for them. Good luck with that. What I do is I just listen for this very particular sound. And I really hope you go out to Timbergold Trails to the mountains after watching this and listen for this. And if you've never paid attention to it, you will say, how could I miss this sound? If the sheep are there, the, sh the sound is there for the most part. And um, it took me probably over 500 sheep to realize the sound. And once I found it, I was like, how the heck could I miss this? So over here, I will pick up the other two later, no worries. But I want to 
go after these as long as they are there. Here, look at this. All the sheep. This is where all the sliding sand noise comes from. I can hear them over here as well. But we will find them. Just listen for where the sound is. The closer you get, the more specific it gets. One ran up there. Let's just run and spook them, and they should give away their position. Various places. There is one. Not sure if I can reach it here. But again, very quickly located. This guy is gone, although I hear something up here. Like most animals, they will spook and then stand around. And this is why we don't hear the noise now. Or they have simply run off into the greener parts where there is no sand to slide. Tarmigans for the longest time up here. Oh, I have sliding sand on this side. One of the sheep is still here. So the patience is really to, to keep looking. And trying to locate it that way, but all the tracking is already done. We know where it is. Well, this one is hard to see. This guy over here is not cooperating. I'm still looking for this here because the other we already located. It's just a matter of getting it now. So bighorn sheep and steep walls is everything but a love story. They just stumble up and down. Listen. Yeah, 
There is more, but I think you get the point. We have located a bunch of sheep, shot three of them, talked a lot in between. Look at the clock, 9.17, cut that 17 in half to get the real time, so roughly in nine minutes. Three sheep down, simply found by the noise. I'm up here above the tunnel now. And here's my two sheep. I'll pick up the small first. And then we'll look at this ram. Ooh, the horns are curling just a little bit more. Let's see what that scores. 165. So that's the other class. 145s are the most. 165 is good. And everything above 180 is really great. So this is what this looks like. All right, so last but not least, I want to show you a little section that I've videoed earlier. And it is it was done down here actually. Down here I picked up a track from a heavy um, ram which said 95 to 120, the maximum that you can find. And I tracked it and I want to show you um, how you can still go pretty fast. Um, the, the hearing is not so well, even though it's a high scoring animal, it will hear you quicker when you run. Um, once you crouch, it's actually doable, feasible to catch up and to shoot it. There's no voiceover uh, because I just started videoing it without the headphones. But um, hopefully you can see how you can also catch up with a nice uh, ram and harvest that.
I hope you enjoyed. Never got annoyed. Thank you very much. Stay in touch.